makes the sounds that I like and, and that I make myself. Oh, I love this hole, despite its annoyingness. But all those uh, uh, climbable grates there, yeah, those are the climbable grates from Super Mario World. Very nice Super Mario World reference here. Um, they're also from Super Mario Sunshine, uh, only they look a lot different than Super Mario Sunshine. They don't have quite the design this one has. Oh, my ball is in a divot. This is horrible. Uh, look at how poor my lie is and how low my impact. See that red area next to the A button? That's what I was talking about before with divots. If it lands in one, you're in trouble. Alright, now this last shot here to the green. Another foot-shaped green, only with three toes. Or I should say, another foot-shaped toe. If, if you can't get the ball high enough and over that uh, over that grading there, you're going to have to shoot between those holes. In my case, I'm able to shoot high enough to get, get over those uh, the grading there. So I should be just fine. I'm going to hope for the best, though, because this, this green is still pretty hard to hit precisely because of how small it is. Oh, yeah. It's birdie time. Make up for the dumb mi missed uh, birdie putt that I had on the other hole uh, of, like, 0.35 feet. It was just hanging on the edge of the hole. N that's not something you would ever miss in real life. Uh, oh, raining. This is an another one of my favorite holes. Um, takes place, obviously, around the castle area. Very, very awesome here. Swamps on the upper tier that go all the way down to the bottom tier that they fall all the way down to the bottom tier. You can either play on the upper tier if you can get up there, but I would I would always recommend playing towards the lower tier and away from those shadows if possible. Um, because what happens is when you play on that upper tier, the on the next shot uh, the arch, like you'll see right right over. I think camera. Um, get, get out of the, <laughs> I can't show the arch. Um, you see that, that pillar right there and that pillar right there? If you look up, uh, very carefully, maybe if I go like zoom in and zoom out. No, it's not going to let me show up. Oh, there's an arch up there. And sometimes if you get too close to the edge there, you're going to hit that arch. And that's not very good. Um, I've accidentally got a, a chip in from hitting the arch, like the underside of that arch, I couldn't believe it. It was one of those ultra-lucky shots that you couldn't repeat if you tried it a thousand times. I still have it on the replay, if you guys want to see it. Um, like, I could do, like, a bonus video of Mario Golf's trick shots or something like that. I don't know. Um, that I saved because it was so spectacular. <laughs> oh, that was a pretty good putt. And... I, I, I could, just couldn't believe it when it happened. I still couldn't believe that it happened. It was just so awesome. Uh, again, not to brag, because I was purely luck-based. Everyone has their lucky shots every once in a while. Um, for this hole, this hole is pretty tricky. Uh, hit over here. Always hit over here on this part of the fairway. Even if you're a short driver, you should be able to hit over here. Because you see, it's only about 230 yards or so to where I hit. If you hit any shorter than that, you're going to have a really hard time getting to the screen in two. And they put the pin over there? That's like the worst pin position they could put anywhere in any golf game ever. Um, where that pin is, if you couldn't tell, is a very high sloped area. So let's just hope for the best here. And uh, that's a pretty decent shot right there. But look how much slope there is on this thing. I can't control how this ball stops. It just goes wherever it wants to. And, and I was trying to make the ball do that, what you just seen there, over by the hole. But it was too hard to control uh, um, the speed of it. Let's see. Is that good? I think that's good. Wish me luck, wish me luck. Oh, so close. At least I'll have a nice uphill putt on the next shot. Uh, uphill and breaking to the left, but still not that bad of a putt. Not nearly as bad as that first putt. Oh, by the way, if you ever hit one of those thwomps, um, what'll happen is uh, they'll actually turn red and get really ticked off at you, but they'll still react like a regu like regular regular thwomp when you plop a ball in the out-of-bones thwomp area. For this shot here... Um, you have a decision to make. You see that thwomp, or womp guy, I should say, over there? Um, you can either play to the left or to the right of him, or you can try your best to get underneath his legs. Um, it's actually not that risky to hit underneath his legs, because your ball will actually go right through his legs, surprisingly. Like, 
Um, when you put your ball underneath his legs, uh, even if you touch his feet, it'll still go through it for some reason. So it's not really that risky of a shot. Um, it's still the fact of don't let it end up short, otherwise he's going to squish your ball into the pavement just like a thwomp. And he's going to squish... Oh, no, he's not. I got it right under his legs. That was awesome. And now that he fell flat on his face forward, he's going to disappear, and I'll have a nice clear shot for my next shot. Only instead, my ball ended up in a divot. That's what I mean about golf being unfair sometimes. Make a good shot, and the reward is a bad lie. Oh, by the way, do not hit inside those pipes with the piranha plants. The piranha plant will go inside the pipe and shoot out your ball at a random angle. You at a random angle, usually in the lava. <laughs> And, as I said before, you do not want to be in the lava. Lava equals out of bones. Lava is death to your ball. It melts your ball. Come, come to think of it, it doesn't melt your ball instantly, which is one of those video game logic moments. Um, when you land your ball in the lava, it just sits on top there. And even if you put spin on the ball when it's in the lava, it'll actually make scorch marks in the lava, like it's just some other texture, not, a, not molten rock. It's just so weird. Um, I, I wouldn't expect the ball to get hotter than the lava to be able to scorch it, but hey, you can't question the game logic. Um, play your first shot over here. If you can't play your first shot over there, play, play your shot towards the other side. Good night! That was my grandpa. <laughs> Um, okay, next shot goes over here to the green. Um, as I was saying, if you can't play your first shot over there, you have to play your shot over by this womp over here. Uh, that, that would be your second best option, but otherwise your first best, shot, best option would be over by that uh, womp where I am right here. And backspin it to control him from hitting your ball into the ground. Hope for the best. This is a good pin position right here. This is like the best pin position it could possibly be on the green um, because you can really control your ball using those slopes. It, it, all the slopes lead right to the hole, so uh, you shouldn't have much trouble getting the ball close to the hole unless you miss hit your shot. But hey, you know, things happen. This is golf we're talking about here. And five under par through 17. I'm doing a pretty decent round. And this, this hole, this. <clears throat> Part three right here is pure evil. Oh, if you don't, if you accidentally hit one of those teeth down there while trying to approach the green, uh, your ball is going to go out of bounds, just about no matter what. Um, I shouldn't have much trouble avoiding the teeth because the wind isn't very high. Um, so just play for the green if you can, and just play it safe. Uh, if you can get a birdie, go good for you. If you can get a par, that's that's still a pretty good score on this hole. Because you do not do not want to get out of bounds whatsoever. And final putt, I think. This because this looks like a pretty easy putt. But I've said that before. Finish with a birdie. Yeah, a little too much power there, but it worked out nicely. Happy Yoshi, go Yoshi, go. And that is the end of Bowser's Bandits. And six under par for the win. I'm pretty sure there's credits in this game, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Let's just see how things go. Let's see the uh, ending sequence here. Yeah, Yoshi for the win. Yeah, flutter jump. Yeah, your signature move. Come on, do a ground pound. Aww. And, yep, here's the credits. There's some credits. I'm sure they're glowing. <laughs> it's because of the camera, but now they're not glowing. Because there's a nice pretty picture of a silhouetted Mario back there. Oh, yeah. I could make that in GIMP. <laughs> so, yeah, these are the credits. Gotta show the credits. You know, gotta be... Have a complete walkthrough, so to speak. Actually, this isn't complete just yet. I have one course yet to do. Um, I might do the ring shots some other day, uh, because those ring shot holes are pretty dang tricky, now the way they have them set up, because you have to play the, the holes, the, the ring shot holes completely different than you were if you were to play the holes normally, and uh, hi Koopa, you were my buddy for many holes, wasn't that the first course I played, if I'm not mistaken, the 
Lakitu Valley, Lakitu Valley, whatever you want to call them. God love remixes. I, I like remixes as long as they capture the feel of the original song. You know, if, if they if they make them like go all over the place and just like ruin the original song's feel, it's just like oh to me. I just want to listen to the original song when I hear when I hear the notes, you know, so to speak. <clears throat> And there's our buddy cross-dressing Birdo. Oh yeah. And we didn't see Bowser at all because I didn't play as Bowser. But eh, you'll be able to play as Bowser if you want to. 